Hydrocnosis is swelling of the kidney due to accumulation of urine in the kidney. When this is diagnosed before the baby is born, it is called antenatal hydrocnosis. Hydrocnosis can be on one side when it's called unilateral hydrocnosis or it may be there in both the kidneys when it is known as bilateral hydrocnosis. Antenatal hydrocnosis is usually diagnosed with the help of an ultrasound which can be as early as 15 weeks of pregnancy. The advancements in ultrasound has helped us to detect this early so that we can prevent loss of renal function and start the treatment at an earlier period. Antenatal hydrocnosis is one of the most common congenital anomalies known to mankind, affecting almost 1% of all pregnancies. Fortunately, in most of these cases, it is only one-sided swelling, but rarely hydrocnosis can involve both the sides. All pregnant women should undergo an ultrasound and focused imaging of the kidneys. This ultrasound will help us in grading the hydronephrosis and the severe ones can be diagnosed early and treatment can be started if required. The causes for unilateral and bilateral hydronephrosis are different. When a child has an antenatal hydronephrosis only on one side, the most common cause is called pelvic ureteric junction obstruction, where there is a block at the upper end of the ureter where it joins the kidney. The second most common cause is called vesicouretic reflux, where the urine flows back into the kidneys. The third cause can be a block at the lower end of the ureter, which is called vesicouretic junction obstruction, followed by ureteral fields, which are outpouching of the lower part of the ureter. When the hydronephrosis is bilateral, the most common cause is bilateral vesicouretic reflux. Following this, posterior urethral valve is the second most common cause, which causes swelling in both the kidneys due to obstruction in the urethra. Finally, bilateral pelvic ureteric junction obstruction is also seen. Antenatal hydrocnosis can be diagnosed as early as 15 to 16 weeks of pregnancy when the urine starts flowing from the fetal kidneys down into the bladder. We advise all the pregnant women to undergo a fetal anomaly scan around 90 to 20 weeks of pregnancy to pick up fetal hydrocnosis if any. While in some of the cases, Hydrophosis may appear later during the second or the third trimester of pregnancy. In fetal hydronephrosis, the sonologist must measure the following the anteroposterior diameter of the fetal pelvis, the quality of the cortex, any ureteral dilatation, bladder emptying, and the liquor volume. This helps us in diagnosing the exact condition and the severity of hydronephrosis. It is important to form a bond and be comfortable with the surgeon who is going to manage your child after birth. So it is advisable that you must meet a pediatric urologist, a pediatric surgeon or a pediatric nephrologist when your child is diagnosed to have fetal hydrocnosis for the first time. Your pediatric surgeon will guide you regarding the further follow-up during pregnancy and after birth. So make sure that you visit a pediatric surgeon and get a plan and show it to your gynecologist. Together, your gynecologist and the pediatric surgeon will help in getting a better outcome for your child. For unilateral hydrophosis, there is no indication for medical termination of pregnancy. If the other kidney is normal, these children will have a normal renal function throughout their life. For children who have a bilateral kidney swelling, most of them will still have a normal kidney function, but some of them may have a poor kidney function. In bilateral hydronephrosis, with decreased liquor, before 24 weeks of pregnancy is considered as poor prognosis. In this case, your doctor may advise termination of pregnancy after an extended set of tests. Every pregnancy and every child is very precious. It can be a very stressful time for the parents when they get to know that their yet-to-be-born child has a kidney swelling. So it is very important that you meet the real expert who knows about these conditions and can counsel you about the outcome and also the treatment which may be required. Do remember that more than 90% of these antenatal hydronephrosis will go on to lead a normal life.